What's up and welcome. Working on this uh, little elm animation for skeletons. Sitting down today. It's a different day. I need a, I need a chat window open here. What's up, Arcane? What's up, man? Thanks for playing the game lately, man. Today I'm gonna work on skeletons and making them so when you walk over the skeleton, they'll fall over like this. And, and also when you die, you're gonna drop a skeleton. That's also another idea, thanks to Boogie. I'm all, what's up Mighty Nest? You're liking the earlier starts, cool. Yeah, I gotta get it. I gotta get it a stream done early today, cause um, we're going to we're going to a party tonight, basically. So I'm sitting down today, cause I'm super tired. Uh, so I need to figure out how to get a chat window. I guess I'll keep the chat window like I used to. Yeah, yeah, I did. I sent the patch up last night, but I didn't. I didn't I didn't post an announcement on Steam or anything, because it's mainly just bug fixes in the latest uh, from the latest version. Really, there really wasn't any new content except for the double damage item and the uh, and uh, the attack speed item. But those are really. I'm just gonna announce those with the next update so basically it's just a patch you know it's just bug fixes in the mostly just bug fixes so i gotta get all my windows set up so i can do a stream like sitting down today without my here we go oh wait wait oh yeah i used to have this window set up like this cool All right, so I'm gonna work on a sound effect now for him. Actually, nah, let's get him in the game really fast because this guy's almost ready to go. Here's the animation so far, he just falls over. Basically, you walk over this skeleton and he, you disturb it and it falls over. It's really all there is. There's nothing gameplay related or there's no mechanic or anything. It's just a totally visual thing. You're just interacting with the world. I guess it is, it, this really does, Contribute to the immersion factor. Okay, so turn off this gray background. How are you guys doing today? Is it still Saturday for you? I think it's still Saturday, right? Where did I put this before? Common. Common it is. Yeah, and that should have added files rather than replaced any. All right, and we get rid of the existing skeleton. And make sure this is pointing to that. And I wanna give him an animation. Oh, I need a profile for that. Hey, what's up, Alex Pita? Welcome, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Belzio.
So I'm adding a little skeleton that you can you can get collide with, and um, he just falls over. And when you when you when you die, you'll drop a skeleton too. So if you if you die a bunch of whole times in a dungeon or whatever, there'll be a bunch of skeletons all over the place. So I've got this one skeleton drawn already where he just falls over. And I'm gonna add this animation in there when you when you serve the skeleton. I'll probably draw a couple more skeletons today and keep playing with the skeletons all all today's stream. It might be kind of a short stream today. It's Saturday and we're going we're going out tonight, so. All right, so this one. So here's just skeleton, and then there's gonna be a release animation. I guess it's a release on collision. Oh, I could just call this activate collision. Cause that that's that sounds pretty good. I'm good, man. Thanks for asking. Very good. In fact, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling like on cloud nine right now. Actually, I played I played through Songbringer last night for the second night in a row. And I actually got controller hand. My control, my hand was actually getting all sore from playing for so long. And <laughs> I realized then that I'm really happy with the game. And I'm like, oh wow, the game's not anywhere near done. But lately, all the new things, all the new enemies, and all the new patterns, and all the downstairs stuff, and like the um, man, it's just all really adding up to be something that's. I don't know. I'm really feeling excited to play it like I got in there and I was like man I can't wait to see what I I, I just want to do one more dungeon because like I want to get one more heart and I want to get um like one more item so I was like I was enthused by Songbringer so yeah I'm excited today to make the game even more interactable I want you to be able to interact with walls like everything will you'll be able to hit if you know, you probably won't be able to like damage walls, but at least you'll be able to hit the walls. Okay, so this is how you can have an activate collision animation. So when you activate it on collision, it does that. Also, I think I might give it a release animation. It's the same thing. So yeah, this might be the way to do this because then, yeah. What's up, John19? Check it out, I'm sitting down today. All right, um, okay, so this guy needs a profile. And let's see if it works. Let's put the player at level one. And let's go play with the skeleton. Probably needs a collision and an activate collision. But I just want to see that it still has the existing skeleton as he is, and then we'll get this animation to work. Ugh. All right, we got skeletons, but I can't see them because they're covered up. Let's try a different level. We're getting some rain here today. It's pretty nice. Here we go. Cool. Okay, so now I just want to walk over this skeleton. Oh, I'm moving really fast because I have the boots. Oh, check us out. Check us out. You guys haven't seen this. This is the hyper top hat. It goes really far. It's really fun. It's like super great to fight all these enemies with this like a super fast top hat. It goes really far. I still need to make, I still need to come kind of, some kind of, um, resolution for what to do with, uh, should the top hat hit the pillars or shouldn't it, you know? Should you just be able to go, like, maybe you destroy. 
destroy a pillar halfway, and then you can throw your top hat over it. Uh, I've tried, like, the last build had it so you couldn't throw your top hat over pillars. This build has it so you can. I don't know which way is more fun. I love it. I love how stuff just destroys the pillars. All right, cool. So this skeleton needs a collision and I guess it'll be a static, but it needs the flags activate collision. It needs a size. Uh, this is like one block. By one block, by two blocks. All right. Okay. Now, uh, now it's gonna have the activate collision flag. So I need to make it do something appropriate when it does activate this collision. So I'm gonna go to the collision system. Thankfully, this last weekend, I did a lot of improvements to the collision system for all these flags. So it's like, should be very simple to add an activate collision method if I don't have one already and make it do, yeah, here we go. Here's, so here's a switch. Let's make, a, let's do something for, um, basically any, any entity that has, a profile component. Let's go. We'll run the activate collision. Yeah. Collision animation. So if this entity has a profile and the profile has The activate collision animation. Then we just run it. Well, I guess this should we should check for render as well. All right, cool. We discovered a couple bugs. <clears throat> uh, reward item. Yeah, I've seen that too. I've seen that too. That's that's definitely because of the latest code and stuff. And I'm I'm also very curious as to why it's doing that. Why it's placing a second item right in the middle when you come back to an area. Um, I haven't. I don't think I've noted that. So let's, let's let me make sure because. That gets noted on Trello right now. What's up, Zilton? Hello, Hub. No. What I'm working on right now is this skeleton right here. Making it so when you um, when you step on the skeleton, he falls over. That's what I'm working on right now. Okay, so let me make sure this is noted. Uh, when coming back to a room with a reward, I mean the item comes back once. Something like that. That's important. Let's get that on top of the list there. Hey, what's up, Cell Mental? The skeleton is damningly cute. <laughs> All right, so I've got this set up, so it should run in the, the activate collision now. 
Let's see what happens when we get in the game, if it even gets this far. I'm going to run it without a breakpoint at first and see if it just works on the first try. That'd be sweet. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, they do have a collision. They have a red collision box. Let's see if this works. Oh, I can't walk on top of it. Uh, all right, so what if I... get in god mode it doesn't allow me to huh so first of all it might need to be a switch basically in order to kind of turn it on static and switch are now becoming synonymous almost Again, I can't step on it. Oh, that's right, because it's a switch, of course. Oh, do I need none? Oh, that might be what I what it needs. Category none, but still it has a collision area. Still we got nothing. But it might be working now. I don't know. Let's see. Collision system, how does it do that? Maybe it doesn't even do collision activate. No, it does activate collision. Oh wait, sorry, I missed your other ones. The courage light on one of the pillar and refill triangle is not turning on. Oh, all right. Let's get that noted too. You didn't find the cup? What? Are you sure? Are you sure you don't have it already? Did you go, did you go where you're, where, do you know where it is? Did you go to the left, basically, from the beginning? Here's the top hat switch. This has a category switch. Oh. A category switch, yeah. That, um, that's understandable why that would work. Wait, what if this was switch and then I went in god mode? It wasn't there, huh? That's completely baffling. Because the game should always place an item down if you don't have it and it's at that position what it needs, but maybe I'll write this down too and see if, see what I can try and figure out. I don't know what if you hmm. Maybe can you send me your um your saves.txt? Yeah, I would probably need to to figure this one out, I would definitely need your saves.txt. So you could either, you could paste bin that. I'll just post it on this link right here. What's up, Azurus? What time do I call this? Morning? It's not even morning though, but it's, I call it morning. Bafu is back. Okay, so to get this guy to... Okay, let's see if this works. In god mode. Ah, oh, still doesn't work. Hmm. Okay, I'm thinking category none. And going to the collision system. All right, so when we're ticking collisions, running collision components.
Here's where it should run the activate collision. Oh, it does. It should be it should be first. Okay, so why is this thing not getting that? Hmm. Category nine, we got a size, we have flags. Oops, let me double check something. In collision component, whether it's returning empty or not, if it's original category zero, and it's flags is zero, and it's size is zero. So no, this is not gonna be an, a, an empty collision component. A rare skeleton with the BC Warrior wig? Oh, great idea. Great idea. Hang on, set a breakpoint there. Seems like it would be working. Sweet, thanks Jonah. Yeah, we're definitely not hitting this breakpoint there. Cool, so yeah, that, that's what I need to at least try that out. All right, lots of bugs, lots of bugs to fix. But I think the list has been whittled down a little bit this week. No, I shouldn't even say that. It was at like 57. Now it's at 75. Just on, yeah, it went from 57 to 75. <laughs> and I fixed like 10 bugs. And then when I played through, I was like, oh, there's 20 more bugs. All right, anyways, I'm having a good time. Making my, this is my favorite game I've ever made. This is the first game I'd really feel proud of, proud of making. <clears throat> so it doesn't ever even do this. How about, how about this? Instead of breakpoint, this is E collision. Ma oh, mask! It needs a mask. Oh, oh, duh. So we want a mask with friend. Nothing. Damn. Hmm. All right, well, let's get back to this. Oh, this is F. Oh. 
Oh, okay, all right. So the way the existing system works, the player steps on everything else. But in this case, I want the skeleton to recognize that it is being stepped on. And since it has category none, Ah. Uh, really, really, this should just be checking for both kinds of, both entities need to have their check here. Yeah. I hope this doesn't break the whole game. Damn. Oh, there it goes. Yes. Oh, oh, every time I step on it, it keeps activating it. <laughs> All right. Yes, we finally have this working. Okay, now I just need to get it so it doesn't run it over and over and over. So, like, you can't just keep reactivating it. No, it's, that's an easy thing to do. Just make it so if it run, yeah, if we've, if we've done this once, it just removes the flag. Yes, this is exciting. The game didn't break and something new works. Jeez. Let's go, just go back in, there we go. Okay, this is running the activate collision animation. We're going to remove the activate collision flag. If this is a successful, if we have this animation, then we're going to remove the flag so we only do it once. If that works, then we'll add some cool sound effects. And then after that, we'll make it so it saves, so it remembers whether it's up or down. Yes! Oh, yeah! Oh, I can't wait to add a sound effect for this. Oh, yay. Yay! 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 So if I go up to the screen, I go back. Right now, they're gonna be, they're gonna be like back up. They're magic skeletons that come back to life. They're undead. Add the sound effect. It's something I got from Free Sound here. Some rattling bones. I'm gonna make this into sort of a. I probably need to take out some reverb and mess a lot with the sound to make it sound right. But what's up? Hello, welcome. That's pretty good. Dang. Okay, let's make uh, let's make this mono mono. I'm trying to decide if that's too loud. It's negative thirty. Should be pretty quiet, but it still feels a tiny bit loud to me. I don't know, I guess we'll see in the game. Well, let's make it fade out a little bit over time. Yeah, that's pretty good. This could work. All right, let's, let's export this. We'll just save it as. Raw waves, mono, 16-bit. Skeleton, zero.
right now the skeleton profile sounds activate collision All right, so same thing. If it has, if it has the sound, it'll play the sound. Actually, let's do if it has the animation. No, there may be some times where I want a sound, but not an animation. All right, so with the E profile, play sound. Activate collision. See how that sounds now. Might need to go up or down in volume a little or something. <laughs> it needs a slight delay. It's like it runs too fast. Yeah, that's like okay. Let's look at the animation. So this is, it falls over, right? He's like, this, th right, this very beginning, there might be like a sliding noise, the sound of a bone sliding against a wall or something like that. But really that right there, this is a whole six tenths of a second into, or no, five tenths of a second into this animation before it ever really makes any noise. Oh, can I put delays in this? It would be so cool to put a delay in the sound, but I don't think that works at this point. So I'll go, I'll go ahead and add a half second of silence here. It's not that wasteful, is it? To add that much silence? Well, I guess it's not going to be wasteful because I might put a sliding noise right here at the beginning. What's up, sound dongs? What if after the skeleton falls, the skull detaches and you can kick it around? Sweet. I like that too. I like that. Yeah, I I really have been thinking about that. How to, how to make everything in the game a little more physical. Like making the um, making blood when you when you hit the enemies and stuff, making that actually splatter in a in a, in a physical velocity, you know, like with a physical um, yeah velocity or whatever. Okay, that sound needs to start a little sooner. And let's take out a little bit that much so that's a great idea salad dongs like making the head where you can kick it around a bit it's, it's doable like you could I, you could turn the head into a separate entity Okay, I'm gonna copy this little part here. Yeah, tiny dynamic and moving bits. Yeah, it definitely adds to the game's feel. Totally. Yep. And uh, what also added to the feel was the, the pillars. The pillars being interactable is really great. And I wanna make it so more stuff in the game is just everything you can interact with. I want you to be able to interact with literally everything. All the bushes, all the trees, everything you can interact with somehow.
things. It'd be nice if this was stretched a bit. What the hell? What's up, baby? I'm streaming. Oh, nice. Nice. Gonna look good, huh? Yeah. Okay, so we're leaving at four. All right. 30-ish. It's what time is it now? It's almost two. Okay. That's not gonna work. Wish I could just make that longer, but... This piece of software, I don't know how to use parts of it very well. Maybe mix paste it a little closer. It's like it doesn't need the silence at the beginning. Hmm, something's really off about this. Let's go backwards to where uh, I mixed pasted that in earlier. And I want to mix paste it this time with the copied audio at like 61.8%. Maybe less. 350. This last bit, maybe this should be negative six or so. Get the timing right is hard on this one because it's hard to like, you really got to imagine what it would sound like for a rib cage or you know, a skull to hit the ground. talking and trying to listen at the same time. That's too soon. Timing, timing is everything. This is where it helps to be a musician. Do you understand timing and how to get things just right? Kind of zone in and see what's the difference between a tenth of a second makes, you know. Is it getting better? Hey, oh, Jim knocked the other one over. Oh, that was great. Oh, man, it's so great having Jim interact with the world, too. Last bit still is too loud. Rip. 
right? What's he doing? Just making a little mess over here. We're gonna have to clean that up later. Believe it or not, I think it actually needs a little more silence in the beginning. Yeah, that's about right. Jib, Jib, do it, do it. Knock the skeleton over, Jib. You know you want to. Go up there, go up there. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. He did it and then he flew right through the middle of the pillar. That was weird. That's about right. I think that's the sound, the timing is just about right. Well, actually, God, my instinct is telling me it needs like that much more silence. Time it just right. Yeah, it's raining. We're getting rain. This is so great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Oh, I love these. I love these. Cool, okay, so the next step is um, to make them so they remember. So if I walk off the screen and come back on, they, they're still the old site that they were in. So. I've got this other flag where I activate, what is it? it re oh, store, it stores the HP. Oh, you know what? If I make them have also have hit points, Hmm, that's gonna get I might get confusing though. Cause if I make them have hit points and you can you can swing your sword and knock them over. Um then you can store you would store the hit points when you go in and out, but Hmm. It's like activating its collision versus activating its change hit points or zero hit points. So I'm thinking basically the skeleton could start with one hit point. You could hurt it. Oh, see that's, you would have to have a different collision flag to be able to hurt it. I guess you could make it neutral or a foe. Could make it a foe. And then it just has one hit point. But no. Mm, making it a foe just doesn't seem right. I really like having its collision categories none. Let's just imagine what that would be like if if you swung the sword and hit the hit the skeleton. I mean that would be cool. Right? It's kind of lame actually right now that you can't hurt it. Let's just explore. Let's see what this would be like if, if it did if it did work this way. Actually, I'm gonna check in what I got so far. This is already pretty good. Let's add these skeleton frames in. And the sound. 
and skeleton text profile. That's saved. It's saved. We added this skeleton. We add, oh, we added this collision activate thing. You know what? I think this is okay. Let me double let me double check something before I check this in. If I go and explore the, the overworld for a second, look for a top hat gate. Guys everywhere. Wait a minute, there's gotta be one around here. There's one. Alright, alright. Alright, so I am at position one two zero. I want to erase position one one zero. So that it doesn't mark these is already up. Basically, I should still be able to throw my top hat and activate this. Yes, hyper top hat, so awesome. Okay, that worked. All right. Good. Oh, it doesn't remember right. That's right, because I did not go past that. Okay, good. This is all working nicely. Um, also, so now that now that entities can bi-directionally co activate collision, I should be able to walk, turn into God mode, and then walk on this. Maybe not. Oh, maybe not. Maybe you just don't get that. Oh, because I... Yeah, I can't... My movement mask... No, wait. Collision mask. Oh, maybe this thing doesn't have its activate collision. Let's see what... Alright. This is the... the something switch... What the hell is this thing called? Data entities. Is it switch one? No, let's go to entities. There. Oh, it doesn't have a profile. It's a category switch. I guess, oh, the player's collision mask would either activate it Oh, or, yeah, okay, so this, wait, here we go, mask, collision mask for this thing. Would be shot top hat. Or friend. Yeah, I'm just confirming something, basically. I'm just making sure I didn't break anything. So we go to God mode. Yes! Alright, yeah, that worked. So this thing now has the mask for friend, which means it's activated by friend. Let's put on shot top hat. And this is going to be something I should definitely check because... Oh, you can knock back the Karsh out of the water? Oh, that's so crazy! 
Oh my gosh, that's funny. Thanks for that report, man. Let me add that in there. That's great. You can knock, knock it back out of the water. What does it look like when you do that? So if I add this shop top hat to the switch, I'm hoping it doesn't activate it twice somehow. Of course it wouldn't, would it? No, it could, it could, it could only be activated once. Yeah, okay, so that's good. Just to know that it could be activated either way. Oh, let's, okay, I can prove that. So if I go to rocks, um, no, the top hat, if I go to the top hat, it changes collision, so, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. It's all right. It still swims on land? No way. Um, I'm just going to confirm that if I take off... Oh, right. Mask switch. If I take that off, right, the, the, the top hat is no longer going to collide with the switch. But the switch can be collided with by the top hat. So I'm probably not going to change the game so it works this way today, but this is good to know that it can work this way. Yes! Good. So good. Actually, this makes the game a lot more flexible in how, it can, how things can interact. Basically, a collision mask works can work both ways. Okay, so I'm going to leave the top hat alone. I'm going to go back to top hat switch. It doesn't need to be activated by friend, but I am gonna keep mask shot top hat on here in case I change this later. Yeah, this is the beginning of something really cool actually. That's really, really good. I, could, I, I have a good feeling about that. So, good, so we added this shot top hat mask to the top hat switch. Doesn't really need it at this point, but it doesn't hurt it to have both of them. The skeleton now has a profile and an animation inside its profile for when you step on the skeleton and it falls over. The skeleton has its own collision information, so it can do all that. And this is the bi-directional collision activation. This doesn't need to be in. Yeah. This is just getting wordy with all these braces around. All right. Very good. Let's put the player back to where we were. Check this in. Cool. Okay, so now let's do the thing with the hit points. Let's give the I'm gonna give the skeleton one hit point, and so you can hit it with your while you're swinging the sword.
Yeah. Health, hit points, one, no, this is less than one. We want this to be 0 0.25. And we want to activate zero HP. And I believe the skeleton animation also needs activate zero HP. The only problem is the player isn't going to collide. The player's sword is not going to even trigger this because it's got a no category. It needs to be triggered by itself rather than the external world which is a tricky one. How would I solve this right now simply? I mean, I guess this would kind of require a whole different change to the collision engine. If I were to make it so you swing the sword and it drops like a an entity, like it creates another collision box. Yeah, I mean, this this might be a good idea, actually, to make it so everything, whenever you attack, whenever, whenever an enemy attacks, whenever a bomb goes off, whenever anything happens, it creates a temporary quick little collision box so that things could know if something's gone on, like, you know, these activates can happen better, but I can't do this right now. This is, um... I want to do. I'm going to do the simple part of this, just where it stores the hit points, because I don't have much time for today's. Much time left on today's stream, so. Dang. Wait, isn't there an activate bomb? No, there's no activate bomb. All right, never mind, never mind. Let's take this stuff out for now. Okay, let's just make it so they save. So. We need a flag for this. There's a store already. Store hit points. What do you call this store activated? Or store activate? Ah, store activated. Yeah, so it's going to remember the fact that it was activated. It's going to set a bit. Hmm, I'm thinking about whether this will 
how these will interact, these two. Because you can be storing the hit points versus storing activated. I guess it's just up to me to make sure that I don't put these flags over each other. No, I'll code this right so it doesn't. Anyways, cool. Let's add these flags. So I can add a flag to an entity that makes it store its, whether it's activated or not, into the tile data. So if you go off the screen and come back on the screen, still has it. Still activated. Pillar has this. So the skeleton is now going to have store activated. Collision component. Okay, so here's where it's, oh yeah, set data with pause. Cool. Look at all this going. Basically, I just need a, I need a function that can get the tile flags for a certain position. <laughs> in fact, I should write this function as an area. Get tile flags for a position. I do this a lot. See, and, and I want to check if it's a valid position. Okay, let's make this function. So area, get tile flags. Let's be three for a pause. Let's get that compiling. So we'll go, if this is a valid pause, return the flags. Otherwise return zero. Cool. So now I just basically made this so I don't have to type that all the time when I want to get some top flags from a position. Any given position. All right. Oh, whoops. This is going to be this. Okay. Back to here. And we can just go auto tile flags equals world. Area, get tile flags, give them the position. And if we have the tile flags, restore it hit points.
Cool. It's nice seeing this all a little bit tidier, shorter. So I need to make sure this works. Uh, I'm going to go make sure the pillars still can be destructed, go off screen, come back, and they should still have their restored hit points. All right, so I'm about, I'm getting close to being done with today's stream. It's gonna be a short stream today. I'm just making so I can save these skeletons into the tile data. So you can go off screen, come back, and the skeleton is still knocked over. And that's gonna be it for today's stream. So probably about 15 more minutes or so. All right, cool. Got this compiled. Let's make sure this is still working as it used to. So that did not break anything. Now I can go and restore activated. So if we have the store activated flag, we're going to grab the tile flags um, and We need to grab the last frame of, so it needs to have a render component. We need a Songbringer mod for TBOL. Sorry, what's TBOL again? Oh, and we need a rent, yes, we need a render component. Got the collision component. Yeah, thanks, Mighty Ness. Oh, Binding of Isaac. Nice. Okay, we got random component, Ian. Tile flags. All right, so all we're doing, we need to remove the um, the active the collision. So and equals bitwise not collision activate collision. So we're taking the collision flag off. and setting the last frame of the activate collision. So we also need the profile. And we need to get the animation. So if we have a render component, profile component, tile flags have been activated, and the animation is not null, 
Then we go render dot sprite dot set sprite frame. We're going to get the last frame. From the animation, I believe I can just go negative one and it gives me that. Get sprite frame, size, frame number is less than zero. Yeah, cool, I added that in. Great, so yeah, we got the last frame of the animation. As long as this is a good frame, should be. Then set it. Okay, now we just got to make it so it actually stores the hit points or the activated flag into the tile data. And I can look at um, store HP for that inspiration. Here we go. See, here's where it would not be nice to be set this by a position as well. Let's make this method as well. Make this handy for later. Okay, we're getting the top offs. If it's valid, you set the top flags. And we should be able to use it here conveniently. Right, so we're getting rid of all that, very nice. Okay, so we should be able to now go to activate. I need to test this, I need to make sure this is still working. But this is where I'll do this right here. Okay, so let's make sure this is still working. Basically the same thing, I'm gonna test the pillars. Activates collision, 
This is the last piece of the puzzle here. If e dot collision dot Actually, this might need to be up above. Acts like Mega Man bombs. Remind me how. Remind me how they were different. I, I mean, I played Mega Man, but I'm trying to remember exactly what the bombs were like there. What was it? What was it about them that you're talking about? Store. They explode in a cross radial pattern. What's that? Oh, you meant Bomberman? Hello, guys. Welcome to part nine. Oh, Let's Bomberman is totally Zero. different. To you, I know what Bomberman bombs are like. Yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That could work. There could be some bombs. Maybe they're different that, do, that work that way. Right, so yeah, we just we're setting tile flags given the entity's position. We're storing the tile flag one. It's just one. That's all there is to it. Actually, this needs to be all the way out when we're like activating everything. Yeah, so. Do we run the activated function? Really, this needs to apply for every one of these. We need, if we have the store activated, then set that top flag. So that will work for basically any one of these. Activate collision, switch, change hit points. And Restoring activated needs to function differently based on which which collision you're reactivating, you know? So if you have the, if you have activate collision and you already have the activated flag, there. All right, 
something like that. We'll see if this is working. that one over. Yay! It worked! It worked! And let's see if it, we can, we can still, like, everything else works. Still. back uh, I'm not sure if I'll be streaming tomorrow but I'll definitely be streaming Monday so just working on fun stuff lately really really fun stuff making the whole everything more interactable and it's very fun to develop and fun to play too well Tarius what's up man hey sorry I'm just shutting down the stream so yeah all y'all have a great day great night thanks for uh, thanks for watching and catch you next time